Lightroom and Photoshop Camera Raw have a few different ways to let us target color. Okay, we've got an HSL panel, which is gonna be global, so generally not what we wanna do. We do have a more refined way within masking to change the color, but it still doesn't quite get us all the adjustments that we want. It's not quite as refined as we want. So if we wanted to make a color, select a color, make it brighter, darker, more saturated, more contrasty, or even change the color, there's a tool that's better suited for that, and that's what we're gonna take a look at right now. We are here inside of Lightroom. I'll run you through a few different examples here. Just so you know, it is exactly the same in Photoshop. If you open up a raw photo, it'll open into Camera Raw. If not, you can go to the filter menu in Photoshop and you'll see an option for that. And your masking tools are right over here on the right-hand side. All the same options in Photoshop are available in Lightroom. So what we have here is, uh, I'll do just do the simple route. Like I, I just want to target a specific color in the photo. And we're gonna build on this as we go on. But what we're gonna do is of course, you know, I, I gotta say I, I, do my, I do my editing a little bit different just depending on the photo. For me, this photo just needs a little bit of brightness, maybe a little bit of contrast overall, okay? But to me then as I start to brighten it, this is what leads me down the, the direct masking path because as I start to brighten the photo, to me, everything, everything looks bright. And that's when I'll start to think of other ways I can go about doing it, which would be a mask. So I'd over to the masking tool. And in this case, I wanna target the surfboard. And the way we're gonna do that is we have a color range. You're gonna see this little range section down here and you're gonna see color range. We're gonna click on that. And we've got a couple of different ways that we can do this. Okay, number one, you can click anywhere in the photo to select those range of colors. So if I click on that surfboard, it actually does a pretty good job of just selecting the yellows in there. It's not always gonna do as good of a job. In fact, I'll undo for a second. I'll try color range again and I'll click up here in the green. You can see it's selected the darker greens, but it's leaving those areas out. If that red overlay isn't good enough for you to see what's going on, you can always uh, just come over here to your masking panel, click on the pop-out menu, and you can try white on black as well. And that'll give you a different view of what's being selected. Of course, the white is what's being selected here. Okay, so again, I'm gonna undo that one. Let's go back to our surfboard. So way number one would be just click and then you can hold down your shift key, you see a little plus button next to it, and you can click again in a couple other areas. If I start to click too much, you'll start to see, you'll see a little red tint that started to happen outside. So it's starting to select more. And I don't really need to do that here, so I'm just gonna leave it um, where it is because I actually think we did a pretty good job. And then from here, what we can do is, rather than, yeah, if I wanted to change the color, then I could go straight down to this hue adjustment. But a lot of times we don't just wanna change the color. Sometimes we wanna make it brighter or darker, which I can do here with exposure, right? I could even add more contrast to it. Sometimes adding texture to it gives the appearance of being more textured and looking a little sharper. And then I could even add some saturation to it if I wanted to, okay? Now that we have that selection, we also automatically have the reverse. So we can always come up here to our mask click on that pop-out menu and we can hit duplicate and invert mask. And now, as I remember I said before, I thought the whole photo got too bright. Now I can darken that background a little bit. That just helps that surfboard stand out a little bit. So that's, that's a super simple way to just start working with the colors. Just to follow it up, could we do this with our HSL? We could, we could come down here as a global change and I could grab the greens and I could change, and I can make them, I'm on luminance right now, so I can make them brighter or darker or saturation or hue, but not all photos lend themselves to this. And the other thing is, is it's a little bit hard to see, but you can actually see the flower changing in this because there's greens in there too, okay? Remember, this is a very global change. So it's not quite as abrupt over the flower, but it is changing because there are some green hues in there. So instead, what we would do is we would come over here to our range. Again, I go over here to color range and I can click. I can hold down the shift key, click again. I can hold down the shift key, click again. And you start to see it selects a little bit more. I can hold down the shift key and just keep clicking inside of those areas. And then what's nice about it is, is if I do have to subtract and I can go to this uh, black and white mask to see that it's not perfect. So if I did have to subtract, I could go over here to the subtract I could try it with the brush. I could also try subtract with objects. 
I did a tutorial recently on that one as well. So then I don't even have to be perfect about it. Should do a pretty good job. Again, subtract, object, and just paint. Okay, so a couple of different ways. It's not doing so good on there, so I might have to take the brush and be a little bit more refined with it. But now I have more access to just the greens in that photo. So now I can, make, again, make them brighter or darker. In this case, I, I thought it looked a little bit nicer when they were a little bit deeper, darker. I can increase that saturation. And then don't forget at the top, you're not gonna see it here. And I wanna to try to point out the little pitfalls to you because this stuff can get confusing. I'm not gonna see the refinement option up here for my colors because I don't have the color range mask clicked on. So all I gotta do is just click on that and now I can refine that. And you can see I can bring it in and it really refines it so it's just the colors I clicked on. Or as I open it up, it, it smooths it out a little bit and that refinement goes to some extra colors in the photo. So keep that in mind. There's no best one way to use it. Sometimes you'll want uh, one or the other. Let's move on to another example here where we just wanna work on some of the colors in the sky. On that note, got a very, very quick word from our sponsor. I promise I'll keep it very fast. If we're, we're masking here inside of Lightroom and Photoshop Camera Raw, there's no way to transfer these masks to Photoshop. That feature doesn't exist. For those of you that do use Photoshop and want some more control and power over masking, uh, one of those ways to do that is luminosity masking. It gives us incredible control over the luminance and the tones in our photo, but also the color as well. You can create some very specific and refined masks using those techniques. So if you're somebody that uses Photoshop and really wants the utmost of control and getting refined, feathered, smooth masks, uh, it's a great course to check out. Also, it's evergreen. The way it works today is the way it worked 15 years ago. I don't see Adobe ever changing this. So you're learning a tool that I think will better help you understand Photoshop better, but it'll also give you a lot more control over your masking. Hope you'll swing by and check it out. Let's get back to the tutorial. So we left off here where I was talking about how I just wanted to work on some of the colors in the sky. Okay, so of course we have select sky, but that's gonna select the whole sky. So what I could do here is go to my, my range mask, my color range mask, and experiment a little bit. As, there, as you've seen so far, there's no best one way to do it. I can click in an area in the pinks. Let's change this back to our red overlay. And you can see it's doing a pretty good job here. If I hold down the shift key and click again, it adds even more. Uh, another thing that I can do is drag select. And that's probably gonna go in and select too much. Um, so it just depends what your photo needs, all right? The more you select, the more you have to work to get rid of it later. But let's just say you did find yourself in a place where you had an image similar to this, just working on colors in the sky. You could always go and subtract uh, other parts of the photo. Another useful way we can do this is go to the color range mask, click on the pop-out menu and choose intersect, okay? What intersect's gonna do, it's gonna, it's gonna create the mask in the intersection of what's already selected, which is the reds in the sky, but the reds in the foreground, but it's gonna intersect that with whatever option I choose here. So I already have the pinks in the sky selected, and if I intersect it with select sky, I will now only get the intersection of where that existed the pinks in the sky, it got rid of all the foreground for me. So from here, now I can go in here, I can make that brighter or darker, I can add a little bit of saturation to it. And by the way, whenever I talk about intersect, just understand it's just a different way to do the same thing. You could get the exact same results with add and subtract. There's no one right way to do it. That's why it's a little bit of a creative mind with this stuff. That's why I always try to teach this stuff because there is no one answer to it. You can get there 10 different ways if you wanted to. So I went in there and just added a little bit of saturation to it, tried to make it a little bit brighter or darker. See how it looks kind of blotchy and weird? That's where refinement can come in. I can bring that refinement down and it just kind of spreads it out a little bit, okay? As I bring that refinement up, it's gonna make it even more blocky and more splotchy in the photo because it's refining it, refining the areas that I selected. It's refining that even more and it's limiting that from going outside of that where going to the left actually spreads it out a little bit more and makes that, uh, that transition a little bit more seamless. So that's a nice way to get in there. Maybe add a little bit of warmth to it. Again, a little bit of saturation, a little bit of brightness, okay? And we could do the same thing with if you just wanted to work on maybe the blues in the sky. All right, so same idea. 
come up here, go to our color range, go in there, click, hold down the shift key, hold down the shift key. You can see I'm, I'm starting to select too much in the photo. So let's go over here to subtract. I'll go maybe to object and I'll just use that brush. You don't have to be perfect about it. It's smart, it can figure that stuff out. I don't even think you have to fill in all the areas there to do a good job of it. So I subtracted an object from it and then it's still got the white cloud. So then I can go subtract and I could subtract luminance range from it. That's a good time because the clouds are brighter than, than the colors in the sky. So I can go in here and I can just kind of lasso and click around there. So now I've got a little bit more control over those blues if I wanted to make them brighter or darker. Again, we have saturation and we have all these controls, but there was a lot of blue and I didn't demonstrate it, but there was a lot of blue over the mountain. So had I done a global control, that wouldn't have worked for this one because it would have worked on the mountain as well. So this way I can make these brighter or darker. I can change the saturation or I could also change the hue of this if I needed to. It's a very powerful way to make a selection. And also, if you haven't seen this video, I did one on the object selection tool, which I touched on briefly here. That's another powerful way. When you start combining these things, you really get some infinite possibilities with it. So if you haven't seen that video, that'd be a great place to go next.